it is time for our Q&A, which was like weekly content that I forgot about, but it is what it is. Who is the biggest menace in all of the anime I've seen? I go alive right now. It's probably from a series called Beyblade. Metal Saga. A guy named Ryuga. Dragon Emperor Ryuga. That guy is an absolute menace. Now, other than like children's cartoons that we're watching in that channel. Anyone else? Right now... I don't know. Like, in Mob Seca, Liam Bartfart, that guy was pretty a menace. Like, I, I enjoyed how much of an asshole he was. Kind of like with uh, Tuka Mimori in Failure Frame too. Like, those kind of characters be menace. But right now, at the top of my head, I'm thinking Ryuga. Am I gonna react to One Piece fan letter animation? There is little to no point reacting to One Piece fan letter animation. We don't even cover One Piece content in this channel. Simply making content for tourists has no meaning. Even if it pops off, what are you going to do with those One Piece watchers that doesn't watch anything that we're watching in this channel? There is no intent in making content like that. Many other reaction channels may just watch whatever they want, but I carefully craft and think about if I make this, what is going to be the outcome? How, I'm going to, how am I going to deal with the aftermath? It is a waste of time. I'm sure it's an amazing episode. We can watch it in the future if we ever watch One Piece. It'll be saved. How often do I dye my hair? Probably like once a year. No hate. Why do I blink so much? Because I have to deal with you retards on a fucking daily basis, reacting my ass, talking throughout like eight hours straight. Of course, I'm going to get fucking tired. And then the amount of idiots that go on to comment this show, it's so fucking annoying. Just consume and fuck off. What was the reason I went to go into streaming? Do you know how expensive it is to live in Vancouver? A six-figure software engineer job as a single person is not enough. I need to be making like 500k a year. So I decided... Huh, I see a bunch of these idiots watching anime on YouTube and making so much more money. Annual salary making per month. I think I can do better. So I did it. And I did it. Which anime has the best impression this season? Best impressions of this season. Obviously ReZero. But I, th I don't think that's very fair. Let me look at some of the uh, new shit. Dandaran I think has been amazing. It's left a very positive impression on me. Dandaran has been amazing. Um, what else has really popped off? I think Orb on the movements of the Earth is so unique. Obviously, it's not going to get the love it deserves because the average audience does not care about, you know, actually well-written stories in a different setting that's not a Japanese high school, but genuinely a great anime. It's sad that the North American global audience doesn't care, but the Japanese audience, there's so many Japanese people that love this shit. Cl truly, they do have the superior taste. Will I get into live action shows or movies? Highly unlikely, and if that ever happens, it's going to be in the another channel. Do I have Dragon, Spark Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero? No. I thought about getting it. It looked actually really fun. I grew up, you know, playing like Dragon Ball Tenkaichi, Budokai Tenkaichi and shit. It's all right. I'm sure it's way more than all right, but I just don't have time to play those games right now. Where did I find the subs for Beyblade? Are you actually asking this question in a live video? You are like an undercover cop going to a high school that you, you, you do not belong in and saying, Where is the Zaza man? Hello, fellow kids. Where can I get the weed? Come on, bro. Have some little tact. Have some awareness. Do I have a favorite composer and why? Right now, Kenichi Suehiro has been popping off. It used to be Hiroiki Saono because of this. You know, Attack on Titan soundtracks go so crazy, right? Kenichi Suehiro, who's done Eminence in Shadow, Isekai Shikaku recently, and ReZero, right? He's so, so good. But then some other ones of notable interest are like Shiro Sagisu or like Taku Iwasaki. Yeah. Yuki Kaijura. Amazing. SAO Fate soundtracks, right? You, you can tell when it's that person. Amazing. Would I create a third channel? Uh, the third channel was supposed to be probably Korean drama if I were to continue to do reaction content. But a part of me is thinking that maybe it's better to get into variety gaming and trying to diversify my content beyond just reactions. But there is no focus on that yet. I need to focus on my main channel. It's really getting into this next phase of we're no longer like early game, I don't think. I don't think we're really a small channel anymore. I think by the time, I, I, I think by the time, like, 
you you might think a small channel is like you know a thousand subscribers beyond below a thousand subscribers but i think there's phases and this, it's called like the early game and i think the early game or in the end game of the early game i think once you get to like like 30 to 50k range per subs and it's not even, a sub count doesn't matter it's, it's about the monthly viewership and it's hard to gauge what the appropriate monthly viewership should be per channel but there's a lot of six-figure channels like 100k subs channels that doesn't get the views that i get because they don't have a content strategy that allows them to pump out more content on a daily basis right so they don't even clear a million views per month right now we've hit another zenkai boost and we're projected to hit 1.5 to 1.8 million views per month for the next three months i think that we're definitely out of the early game almost we're slowly getting to mid game why was i even talking about that oh because i'm it's this question and i'm trying to really like make this main channel operate so smoothly that i can not focus on it so much and focus more on some of the other shit. the second channel cartoon is doing well there may be a chance that I do a minus one video from the main channel because right now it's five reactions per day. Four anime reactions for the main channel and one for the second channel. The second channel honestly is making more money than the first channel based on average views per video. Each video gets so much more views than the main channel because of how thorough the focus of the niche is. How I'm able to only make Beyblade content, satisfy the algorithm, give positive signals every fucking day. You know, the recommendation system can scale at a bigger scale. And if I were to do a minus one saying, you know, instead of four anime reactions, we, we drop it down to three and focus on two per cartoon. I think that there's going to be a better return on investment. I feel like there might be honestly a diminishing return at a certain point for the main channel. Right now, we're also pumping out like eight videos per day, right? In like three hour intervals. And it's a very maintainable and sustainable format. Eight honestly isn't even that hard. Before I was doing like 10 to 12 last Denkai boost because that's the point where I finally breached over a million views per month and it felt like this is getting crazy so I wanted to really just push 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 it's gotten a little bit unsustainable that's why I kind of just to chill back and focus on you know something that works intervals of three hours it's working right now but I'm focusing on those two main channel and second channel needs to get to a certain level that I'm comfortable with and then I could maybe focus on having like a variety gaming channel in the third channel that, that's that's what I think I should be doing Let's see. How do you put it to season one? Failure frame or spider CGI? Spider CGI. Easily. Spider CGI is so much more superior in season one. But season... Well, at the end of season one, it gets really fucking bad, though. First half is decent. Second half is atrocious. Will I watch shows that I... Hmm? Will you watch shows that you like or only which your audience vote? Like, which... Well, for YouTube shit, of course, I'm not going to watch anything that my audience doesn't like. I'll watch the shows that I want to watch on my own spare time after stream or before stream. I'm only focused on what you guys want to watch on YouTube. It's a business. Is there an anime character I can relate to? Yes. Don't you know that I'm Ayano Koji? I truly am Ayano Koji. Don't you know that copy pasta? Do you consider Dan Dan better than ReZero in the earlier episodes? If we compare episode one and how we... What's the word? Gauge community... Impact the significance Dan that like episode one had. I think Dan Daran definitely had more. But it's season three of Re Zero. It's such a niche thing. Dan Daran is very wide appealing. Right? It can only make sense that Dan Daran would be more accepted and happy when you know there's 90 minute fucking episode one drops and most retards watching Re Zero don't even understand what's going on and can't even appreciate that thinking it's filler. So if you think better as in what does the average consumer think, how much like positive impressions were they given then yeah i think dan dan was better do i plan to watch the one piece remake if the wit studio remake starts happening i think that i'll try it i've been thinking about making a separate channel call call tv3 just for shonen content i would lead in doing every hunter hunter opening i would literally treat it like the mate like the second channel we get into the algorithm by making a very wide appealing, you know, video, opening reactions people fucking love. Now you're into the algorithm, the audience of Hunter Hunter enjoyers. Then I can farm out Hunter Hunter for all it's got. Then I can vote, you know, talk to my community. What do you want to watch next? Maybe they vote in Black Clover. Maybe they vote in Boruto. I don't fucking know. But that's a way to keep that going. And maybe at a certain point, that channel should be covering One Piece. And I bet it'd be doing better. But 
I'm very greedy and I have an ego that wants me to make my main channel be able to cover sh Battle Shonen content too. I, I don't know. Thinking about it. What anime do I wish had a second or third season? Kumo Deska in the top of my head. Do I plan on doing anime movie reactions? Anime movie reactions are Patreon exclusive content. They literally happen whenever there's important movies. ReZero, Frozen Bond, Memories, No. Where the fuck were you for that? I can play the piano because every Korean kid grows up being taught how to play the piano. What visions do I have for my channel in the future? I think that anime reactions is the bread and butter. But notice how I'm trying to venture out to different types of content. You know, like... What was the other videos I was making, right? Like talking about like, you know, work-life culture and like the Japanese society or like Gen Z's dating experience. People are slowly starting to realize that my commentary and reactions is not just for anime, but I can talk about literally fucking anything and it can be pretty engaging. And the goal is to have people watch me for my take and personality rather than people watching me for the specific show I'm watching. And this is a fundamental concept that most people don't understand on YouTube. They think that every view is the same. They think that they're popping off because fucking Roshidere is airing. They think that Eminence and Shadow is airing. Some other trending shit is airing. They're getting a lot of views. And as soon as that stops, what happens? The views dies off because they don't watch that channel for them. And what I'm trying to do is change that. And it takes a long time. It All, ha all you have to do is cover the trends. Have tourists come in, give them a reason to stick around, build that audience up, and after enough time, they become a hardcore zealot that will watch you for whatever you do. And will I still be doing anime reactions in 10 years? Who knows? But I'm always trying to like, think 5-10 years into the future, what am I actually going to be doing? I think that anime reactions can continue, definitely, but maybe there's like different business ventures that I should be thinking about, but for now, Let's focus on what's immediately ahead of us. Let's make sure that the main channel can succeed. Keep doing well. We got a working system. Every three month in their iterations, we're getting like a 1.5x to 2x boost. Things are amazing right now. Patreon's popping off. Second channel's doing fucking amazing. Second channel is honestly exceeding expectations. My execution strategy of being a one trick pony for one specific topic is working. And once those two have some sort of standard some threshold that i've met that i feel comfortable enough to venture out to some other projects i'll think about that which woman character has made the most impression on you you can't say rem because she's not your soulmate but what i can't see i do not care about rem that's that's a lie i don't glaze rem nor do i think that rem is the best girl i think there's something weird about a girl that literally is just there for you no matter what no matter how fucked up you are no matter how much mistakes you make that she will just give you your undenying love. Now, in the context of Remnant Subaru, it's different. But in the context of motherfuckers thinking, who is my waifu and Razor, I think a lot of people have a very twisted perception on what even Rem is and how you're supposed to, you know, be better for her. A woman that made an impression on me. An anime? There's not many good representation of women in anime, to be honest. Most of these motherfuckers don't even know what a girl is like, and they just... They're, they're just soulless husks. Like, you see in Battle Shonen all the time, girls get treated so bad. You see in Beyblade, every girl is just fucking L mid. They're just the butt of the joke. It sucks. Let me think, let me think. I honestly don't know. I honestly... Don't know at the top of my head right now. Like, a good girl character that left a lasting impression on me. I genuinely can't even think of one right now. I'm even thinking, like, beyond anime. I'm thinking, like, movies and, like, different TV shows. There's nobody. There is a content creator, though, that I respect a lot. Alicia X Life. I think that what she's doing being limited through a VTuber rig because the physical comedy cannot be conveyed. It's way harder with through a VTuber rig that she's pumping out content. Like, I think that she's definitely made an impression on me. Plus, I don't want to tell you, like, some private stuff that she's going through. But if you know, like, 
bro, her backstory is really, really unfortunate and sad and something that like also my mom went through, but she's killing it still. She's still moving forward. So it's, it's very inspiring. So I'll give Alicia X life for that. What is my childhood favorite anime if I have any? Dragon Ball. Definitely Dragon Ball. What do I feel about Ari Furata at the moment? Ari Furata... It's such a fun, chill anime. It does not take itself seriously, and it's perfect. ReZero is way too fucking serious. And I love it because it's so serious. And you gotta be so sweaty and try to understand the subtle things going on and try to relate beyond just what you're seeing into different themes of constellations, different, like, lore, Many, many different things, like it just world, real life examples and trying to tie into that to what the story's trying to tell you. And then there's Ari Furata, where it's kind of opposite in terms of how serious it is. And I love it. It's nice to just sit back and just have some fun and some bullshit's happening. You might think it's trashy and it's definitely trashy, but I love it because it's trashy. There's definitely a place, time and place for it. Ari Furata is doing fantastic. And season three, I think, is the most recent episode, Ari Furata. It truly is like, it understands what they're about and excels at it. Just because you have trashy elements of like harm and stuff happening in anime doesn't mean it's bad. It's all about the execution. I think Ari Furata is very aware of what kind of show it is and they're popping off because they know what they are about. After Index, are we watching Railgun? Of course. The poll is going to be determining if we're going to be watching Railgun after Index Season 1 and you know, it better happen or else you guys are fucking cap. You're liars. What's my favorite t anime of all time? Right now, it might be ReZero. There is... It's it's crazy how much ReZero has just twisted my perception of what a good anime is. It's, it's just so good. It just like fits my... It's it, Again, it's just a biased anime for me. ReZero is such a biased anime for me. Everything about the setting, witches, cults, the mysteries. It's just... it it, it It's like... Take a good anime and everything about it is something that you already like. That's basically ReZero for me. Is there any game I really want to stream if it was guaranteed to pop off on YouTube? Loki, right now I'm thinking Maple Story. <laughs> I mean, you can hear Maple Story soundtrack in the background, but um, <laughs> the, other than uh, nah, it's, it's honestly a non -serious. There's no time for me to pl be playing games. All my time is focused on content creation and then just kind of like doing some stuff outside of content creation that still helps me to content creation. Like every day. I hit the gym, I, I try to, you know, have a healthy diet. I try to do many other things that's gonna, like, support me to do better in content creation. But... I wanna play games. <laughs> I wanna play games. If I had to choose which Isekai anime I'd get Isekai into, uh, it's definitely not ReZero. I'd probably love to get into the Konosuba world. A non-serious world like Konosuba would be fucking perfect to Isekai, and I think that'd be so fun. Voice actor, I can call my favorite. Dio's voice actor. Yes. He just... He, he just so good, bro. I love Dio's voice actor. Do I ever get burnt out by my rampant content schedule? To that, I will answer with this picture. Someone who works hard can never beat someone who enjoys themselves. And every day, content creation honestly is like a mode of stress relief. The fact that I can like lash out and call out monkeys, it's great. It's also a way of doing creative expression of outlet, right? Me doing commentary, me trying to make jokes, just creating something and being rewarded for it. It's an amazing feeling. And because I've already worked my time in corporate society, I know what it's like to work for someone else's goals and not get rewarded for it. And no matter how much work you put in, you don't even, you know, it, it, it just feels like an empty path. That's how I felt when I was a software engineer while doing YouTube on the side. YouTube content creation, the reason why I could do nine to five and then come home and then do another six hours of content creation is because it gave me hope. It gave me a light at the end of the tunnel. Every day I do content creation, it's actually so fun. It's so fulfilling. And even if all I'm doing is just watching silly videos and making silly jokes, it's a way for me to express myself in a creative way. 
And because I'm having fun, I can't really get burnt out. Sure, sometimes in the back of my mind, I, I, I might not want to do anything. But the moment I go live and I start reacting and just having fun, it's just kind of gone. It's all about having and like I have a very hard work ethic and discipline. Like this is something that's just been existing since I was a kid. I always wasn't the most talented. I was always not the most athletic, the smartest, whatever. But I could outwork anybody because I had that like ego and desire to do better. So compare all the shit that I've done in the past to this. This is a fucking joke. All I'm doing is going live and watching some anime. What the fuck is so hard about it? Who is my favorite Babel character this season except for Ryuga? Probably Kyoya. Kyoya is just so fucking peak. Anime that I really want a new season? Uh, season 4 Re Zero. Other than that, uh, season 2 of No Game No Life or Kumo Deska. Anime which I started with zero expectations and ended up getting surprised? Re Zero, I can't say that because there was so much expectation. Kumo Deska, maybe? No one really hyped up the spider anime. Honestly, more people were just saying this shit's trash. You know, this shit's just CGI garbage I watched and the story was so deep. What are some other animes that had zero expectations? Eminence and Shadow. That shit came out of nowhere. Like, like I was just trying to pick up, all right, here's a new seasonal anime. Let's see what we're going to cover. All right, let's just watch this. Eminence and Shadow just popped out of nowhere. That shit was crazy good. What else? I can't say Tensor Mushoku Tensei because, again, there's expectations. There are known series. I'm talking about, like, random seasonals that just showed up and just delivered. Now, maybe not by the story, but in terms of YouTube performance, bro, level 99 Villainous, instant death, wrong way to use healing magic. Yo, those shows just pop the fuck out of nowhere. I thought that they were just going to be random mid, you know, seasonal shows. People love that shit. What's my favorite segment to do on stream? The drama videos, maybe? <laughs> Farming Reddit threads? Twitter threads of people crying about me? <laughs> maybe? What YouTube niche do I watch the most? You know what? Let's go check that out for ourselves. What's my homepage? Maple story right now. There's some drama stuff with Mujin. Random anime soundtracks. This is like Epic 7, like a mobile game I'm playing. Random cooking videos. Honestly, a lot of the my, my my feed is a bit twisted because I'm obviously watching so many like video essays on YouTube content. But you'll notice that like uh like this channel is pretty cool too. Channel 5 News, if you haven't checked them out. I I I do enjoy like a lot of different type of content of like marketing and business. Like for example, I think a perfect example would be like a video like this. Like the fine dining restaurant in New York City, subway station, stuff like this, just like food business, stuff like that. I, I don't know. It's some, uh, you, you might think it's boomer boring content, but I find that pretty fun. Is there any chance in the future I'll post piano videos? Highly unlikely. And if I do, maybe I'll go the pan piano route. When I watch random anime outside of reaction content, would I recommend any of those to anime? Sure. A random anime that I recently watched? Iron Maiden Jun? Oh, Iron Virgin? Iron Virgin Jun. <laughs> it's a 1992. So one night, I, I I used the random tab, and I found this anime called Iron Virgin Jun. And basically, it, it it seems like a civilization of matriarchy. And think about like JoJo's characters. Everyone is super fucking jacked, but it's the women that's jacked, and all the men are like subservient. And the plot is like. The daughter is doesn't like her mom and she's running away, but they're trying to get her back. So the mom sends like these assassins after her, but the assassin plot twist actually wants to. That's a spoiler. Think of the word Iron Virgin and think of how that may relate to the spoiler. What a fucked up anime. <laughs> what, what a fucked up anime that was. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. Uh. Power God rates. Oh, okay. Thank you for. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 
What is this? Thank you, Levels, for the Prime, man. Thank you, thank you. If I were to choose Assassination Classroom or Toto, what's, what, what would I like more? Um, Assassination Classroom is very heartwarming. When Koto Sensei is really reaching out to the kids that are outcast and he's like building them up, there's a very wholesome aspect to that I really enjoy. But Toru as well, you know, it's just a totally different anime. And we haven't gotten it enough in. We're only on like episode, what, 14 right now? But based on what I've seen, I probably enjoy Index more than Assassination Classroom, but that doesn't mean Assassination Classroom is bad by all means. Two community series we're watching right now are just popping off both, so I'm glad. Would I ever read the ReZero novel if it continues to be my favorite? Um, I would only read up to where the anime is left off, and that's pretty much it. Hypothetically speaking, if someone made a channel for a specific niche like Gotcha, but their main content was reactions, we're trying to do in-between stuff like gameplay and character pull bits via content strategy. So you are a Gotcha niche. No, no, no. It's a main content is reaction content, but they're trying to do Gotcha stuff. Well, there's some overlap there. It's not like you're completely derailing your audience. The reason why my Genshin Impact Honkai Star Wuthering Waves reaction for trailer did well is because a lot of you guys actually play those games. There's like overlap of gacha enjoyers in anime because gacha games, it's just a bunch of fucking anime waifus being pulled, right? So in this specific example, there wouldn't be that much, you know, hurt. I, I think still at the end of the day, you need to focus on one niche and focus on that niche to build off. And if you don't, then you're going to be like my channel, where it's so it's variety content. It's going to be a slow burn. But if you can round up, if you understand your audience enough, you, you don't have to only focus on one specific niche. You could do gacha content, you could do reaction content. As long as you understand who your audience is and you're giving content that they even want, you, you can still grow. But again, you're, you're fragmenting the audience. You, you, gotta, you gotta really think about what you're doing when you make these videos. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What's my first impression of Classroom the Elite? Super fucking edgy. Bro, the first episode starts off with Iona Koji talking about, like, are human beings equal? I'm like, what the hell? Y'all are 14. This can't be this fucking deep. What the fuck is happening? Classroom of the Elite was honestly comical in terms of how edgy and, like, <laughs> serious it was. But it's truly a peak anime. What made I Mimi choose Patrick as my second channel for the profile picture? Just on a whim. There's no thought process involved. I'm like, cartoons. What's a cartoon? SpongeBob's a cartoon. I have this funny picture of Patrick. Sure, why not? Go in there, Patrick. Anime Man is not about anime now. He didn't get recommended to me even when he talks about Uzumaki. Oh, yeah. There is a Uzumaki video that Anime Man made that I actually want to you know, talk about. Just passing by, I want to say I found your channel through YouTube. Recommending me your channel and your Beyblade reactions. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the Beyblade. Am I watching the new Bleach season? I'm not. I'm waiting for a time to actually cover Bleach. How does the name Kaka come from? That is a secret that one day y'all might hear. But that's it from me. Thank you for a another session of Q&As. Hopefully you got to know a little bit more. See you next time.